welcome to the uh, Miami Township Trustee Board Meeting of August 21, 2023. We have present here all three trustees. Cynthia Powell, our minute taker. Denny Powell, Assistant Chief. No, no, no. Interim Chief. Oh, Denny Powell is Interim Chief. Um, Chuck Schaus of the YS News. And the guy who ran for council last time, right? No. Is that my name? <laughs> Scott Osterholm. 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 Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I recognize you from <laughs> Candidates Night, but I didn't remember. I'll be there again this year. Welcome, Scott. Separation. <laughs> um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. I guess I should have done that first. And I'd entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of August 7th, 2023. So moved. I'll second. And we have a move in a second. Is there any discussion? I have one question. Last page, page four. Middle of the thing, zoning inspector report. <coughs> one, two, three, fourth paragraph. It reads, Mr. Zoff reported that at a recent Ohio Township Association training on zoning, he attended, they were told that a BZA is to listen to testimony and solicit testimony, in which case all information needed must be on forms presented to them. I thought that was what was told from Jen Q, not from a BZA training, or from a OTA training. Might have been, but you guys. I read that. Um, where is it? Oh, oh you're at page, page three. Okay. One, two, three, four. four. I don't have a clear memory of it, but uh, there is a I video. Do, I do, but if I, I'd like to see it in print first. But yeah. why is my four? My notes specifically say OTA training. Okay. That doesn't mean I uno dos tres cuatro. Um, well, I'm fine with leaving it because I I, 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 ne I never heard that, and so I will. I can go back to the video and verify. Yeah. Okay, actually, okay. it is my memory that Jen Huber did not say that. Okay. Well then, I will move to approve. Again, I will second. Okay. No further dis hearing no further discussion, except mm -hmm. for that one thing that Cynthia's gonna check out. May we vote? Uh, it's been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of August 7th, 2023, as presented with one possible correction. Uh, Mr. Mutu. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Ms. Okay. I would entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in the um, in the amount of $44,077.55. That's general fund $1,722.59. Fire fund a modest $36,522.18. EMS 14482, Cemetery 4864, Road and Bridge $5,639.32. I move to approve. I'll second. Any discussion? No. Not for me. Hollister? No. No. Hearing no more discussion, may we vote? Been moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of $44,077.55 as enumerated. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Motion is approved. Correspondence. Um, I thought we'd received this last time, but the Green County Commission sent us our nice moratorium that we that, that they granted us. Um, U.S. Treasury new SL slurfa slurf rules. I, I, they look like they didn't affect us. Um, Partners for the Environment registered for the September 20th awards event. Chris, you you registered for that, right? Yes, I did. I'm going to beg them, even though you asked me if you could register. I'm going to call and beg them if I can to see if I can go because I think the date. Oh, I'm sure you can still go. The 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 RSVP date was the 18th. Mm -hmm. That's that's for. The cut rate, I believe. Oh. Trust me, you can go the last minute. Are you going now? Oh, yeah. Oh. Regional Planning Executive Committee agenda, and Kate Havoc, 
and I had interaction. She needed information about basically where we are with the six month moratorium on small solar and asked generally what we had any more plans. I responded to her. Ben Mayer and Chris Meacher had a riveting exchange about columbarium doors. Yes, it was. State auditor notification of filing. I wasn't sure what that was. And then I'm kind of, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, Mabeka invoice, MediCount semi annual report, claim links invoice. Richard Sullivan, Sullivan notified us that we have a resignation on the BZA, Barbara Craig Lake has resigned. Mm -hmm. And um, Patty Buttlemeyer is enticing us to go to the Watershed Conference on September 7th and 8th. At this time, uh, I'm, I'm calling. Just real quickly, I don't believe we need to uh, list out bills that come into the we don't need the Rebecca invoice listed. We don't need the claim link invoice. I mean, we have Got it. 50 other ones that, we, that aren't listed, so. Yeah, no, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. Um, while we're on that, are we confident that we're all getting all of our emails now? I'm not. I'm not confident either. Don sent me one and I never got it. I sent him one, I don't think he ever got it. If you let me know specifically what those are for them, I can look on the server end and see what okay. it is. <clears throat> so far, the ones that, that I'm aware of that I've looked at for human error. Hmm. So just let me know and I'll look at it. And I'm still checking on Deb Slater because I, I sent her a test email today because she wasn't getting back to me. So. Okay, that was the person that you didn't yeah. get before? Okay, I'll actually, I'll look at her tomorrow because I okay. can see. Yeah, I sent her one last week to test and it, she never I, I know where the error occurred on that. Um, I, it, it's not, doesn't make sense to try and explain it here, but it, it definitely is a Microsoft thing once Servlet and I checked it out, but it's not something that makes any sense. So if it happened with Deb again, then I will call Microsoft and see what they can, because it's a configuration error on their end. So Don, you <clears> sent Chris an email from I, your new account? I don't think it's worth talking about. Got it. Let's go on. The important thing is just make sure you guys see, if one of you sends one, make sure you CC the trustee account. That's the important thing. If that makes sense. Always? I, or I don't yeah. feel like this is appropriate. Yeah. For, Got it. It's, like it's appropriate. I don't think it's necessary in our Got meeting. it. Um, at this time, I'd like to recognize any members of the public who'd like to address. Okay. Uh, my name is Scott Drum, and on August 10th, Carmen Lee Brown and myself met with Rick Prowlis down at Ellis Park for two reasons. One was to get new stops onto the bike path, and which we ended up getting the following day after meeting with him. We got brand new bike and new stop signs there. And I was talking to him about getting the speed limit change from where Yellow Springs ends extended past Ellis Park to 35 miles an hour. And I know I got to go through the county on that one, but I wanted to come here since we're, I'm getting out on the you know, if you're area, you have the right to know what's going on. And if you'd like to maybe vote or support it or, or not, uh, but I just want to make you aware that's what's kind of going on. And uh, with your blessing, I'm planning on getting a hold of uh, uh, Stephanie Goff. Is that to the county line, Scott? Huh? Is that to the county line? I was just thinking about going past Ellis. I'll defer to the engineer on how far they think it needs to go. Well, well Clark County starts at way a little, past the top a little of the ways. Yeah, yeah. Past yeah. Scott Hill. But you're not thinking of taking it. No, just Park past Ellis Park. Uh-huh. So it's 35 and then go wide open. Because as of right now, you leave Ellis Park, it's 55. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I would support that, for sure. And supporting you includes maybe writing a letter to Rick Perales? Mm, it would be to Stephanie Goff, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm sure that she's the one I talked to, she's the one I'd like to talk to y'all. So I'm mm -hmm. sure get ahead of it a little bit. I would definitely. Well, I will add to that. And some of you may remember this, I don't know. Uh, I called her, I guess, as soon as the July 4th holiday was over, uh, to see about clearing brush. And the village was already clearing the, the visit, improving visibility from the bike path is what's on the road. Uh, but 
I didn't try calling her, I just called the county engineer's office. And she called later in the day. So uh, I was impressed by that. Uh, and then I messaged her that the village had already done it. But, so I would expect that she'll be responsive. That doesn't mean that she'll be able to immediately. Well, I had the idea. I'm sure there's a process. Is, yeah. <laughs> I also suggest you suggest to her to put a reduced speed ahead sign as mm -hmm. well. That's kind of the issue that we had on Fairfield where mm -hmm. we go from, you know, 55, so they've tried to drop it. So in this case, you're going from 55 to 35. So have, have a warning like at the top of the hill. Yeah. And that's plenty far in advance of where your suggestions are. That is a reduced. warning when you're coming from the north. Yeah, reduced mm -hmm. speed ahead, just like yeah. normally see here or where else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would entertain a motion to support Scott's request and write a letter to Stephanie Goff. I so move. Although Chris may have already said he was moving that. I just said I'd support, so I'll take that and I'll second. Um, I, mean, I appreciate the offer. I'm not sure a letter is necessary unless she wants it. I don't know how to talk to her. I can't be all first. So. Oh, uh huh. Okay. Well, if, if, if that's the procedure, we'd be happy to follow her procedure. We do it. We can do it by official, you know, motion of support. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Well, so we're gonna. You're suggesting that we wait. Yeah. Okay. I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> You want to re, re, want to do motion, motion to support or <laughs> and not the letter, right? <laughs> you want to motion to support? Huh? If, if you guys want to support and if we need a letter, then we'll give the letter for the letter if you like. That's what my motion was. Okay. okay. <laughs> <Motion> was. <laughs> <laughs> Hearing okay. no further discussion, okay. may we vote? It's been moved and seconded to uh, express support for the efforts to change, the, to adjust the speed limit on. Okay. Polcat Road coming into the village um, as discussed. Uh, Mr. Allen. Yes. Mr. Mercer. Yes. And Ms. Moore. Yes. Thank you. Board is and another thing, thank you, residents of Hawthorne. I really appreciate y'all and all the responding units out there last Saturday. I was there at 445. I, mean, I was out there too. Well, actually, mm -hmm. You guys did a very good job. Everyone did a great job. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank y'all. Thanks for coming. We're about to have fire department report. Huh? Of course, I've got another meeting here. <laughs> <laughs> thank y'all very much. Yeah. Fire department. Yes. Uh, activity wise, we had six fire calls, uh, 35 EMS. We didn't have any inspection activity in the last two weeks. Um, We'll start seeing inspection activities picking up in terms of uh, overall scheduling and then the, the number of inspectors that we have will make that a, a lot more easy to obtain uh, in, uh, inspections. So we should see that number going going up, although part of what we'd be doing right now actually is a lot of pre planned stuff that we're trying to catch up on. Um, this is probably really more for you, Chris, but um, on on our fire stat numbers that are where they look in there in that half dozen range where they used to be like twice that historically in the past. Um, the reason for that, if you ever question it, is because the rescue gets out so infrequently. And now the whoever's the shift duty officer is taking honestly the, the chief mobile mm -hmm. to those calls and that doesn't count as a fire call mm -hmm. in these statistical purposes. So if you were to happen to go back and look at that data mm -hmm. over the past, you're like, well, why is it really half? Just to plant that idea in your head, that's that's why. Because uh, okay. I was I actually was questioning that recently, and I was looking at some data, like, oh, that's why. So just to toss that out there. <clears throat> um, okay, as far as topics go, I hit the, the low hanging fruit kind of stuff to start with. So injury updates, you guys know we've got two people out on injury leave from knee problems. Um, Thursday, Thursday, Friday-ish, uh, those people will have had their uh, orthopedic referrals as well as MRI, should I should have a better 
knowing of where that's going to go and how that's going to proceed because uh, we're all pretty anxious on on that um, so Kendall will be dropping down to part-time PRN uh, he was able to get a full-time job in, in the fire department at Columbus Airport uh, so that's a really great opportunity for him so he'll still pick up and, and fill in some relief in that um, and let's see uh, okay software stuff I had you guys uh, approving our software uh, change in our scheduling at the last meeting just to let you know that we're looking at about four weeks out to go live with that so the next two to three weeks will be all the in-service training all, all the data stuff has all been done already so that's that's uh, moving along very quickly did you say you had, had received a test package or something so you get familiar with it we did a we did a demo they don't have demo. the ability of a sandbox mm -hmm. so they go through and run run through it on the screen mm -hmm. um, i would prefer to have something so i could actually legit sit and play with it mm -hmm. but i was comfortable with what they were showing and the questions that i was asking they would go show and how it was done um, so that was good we had a, a, a 30 minute conference call this morning that actually <clears throat> was kind of the basic onboarding stuff and within about 15 20 minutes they already had the schedule set up and planned of how it was going to actually work mm -hmm. which was better than what we're currently under i i hung up the phone and nate and i were both like oh my gosh they already got it figured out um which was like good so i'm thrilled so far how that how that's progressing and they will in service not only admin but they're willing to answer the staff mm -hmm. you know as well so that that should help quite a bit with compliance on using the system. Uh, so with, with scheduling changes um, and uh, just kind of how things are working in general, I would like to definitely look at hiring some additional people to fill in mostly part-time relief spaces. Because I, I have no I have no flush room to be able to bring anybody in without incurring overtime. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we've talked about the sensitivity of the budget and that. Um, so I, I was going to start working on that this week, getting a flyer together, getting that out um, to to the various listservs for email within the area as well as Facebook, because we do pretty well when we have to prioritize something on mm -hmm. Facebook. Um, so I don't think I'm not sure if that needs anything board approval at this point, mm -hmm. but just to toss that out there. Um, <clears throat> as far as the Hawthorne apartment apartment fire goes. It is still technically classified as remaining under investigation, mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's going to sit that way at least for probably I would say the next week or so anyway. Um, you know, it, outside of that, that's about all I can really say about where we are with that. Um, you know, as I did talk to to a couple of you a little bit about it, um, you know, that is an extremely complicated fire. Um, I was absolutely completely thrilled at where they actually were able to stop the fire. Um, you know, it never made it down to the firewall. The complexity of that fire really ultimately was because we had an old original flat roof construction and then putting a metal pitched roof on top of that is, I mean, it's fine in terms of being an expensive to retrofit a roof, but for fire purposes, it's a nightmare to be able to put out. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm quite pleased at, at uh, you know how, how that all played out with respect to our, our people and, and mutual aid agencies and that. Um, did you guys have any questions about that? The only one I had thought about is, is, is it possible to mandate retrofitting the other building um, with firewalls or whatever up in that space? No. No? Unfortunately, definitely not. Mm -hmm. yeah. How about the electrical service in those buildings? Is it back or where, where's, what's the status of that? Do you know? So the, <clears throat> the adjacent building, um, <clears throat> I know they are working on it. I'm not sure what their final, what their status of that is right now. Um, but it, it was in not the greatest of shape and was, I mean, it was right where we were in close enough proximity to the fire that, you know, I'm like, we need to, have this looked at and determine whether it's not going to be 
and save. Mm -hmm. um, so the process now for that is that's with the building department for the village. And my understanding, I talked to Johnny uh, a little bit about some other topics today and that, uh, that they they were involved. So I, I hopefully the electricity has been turned on to that building, but I can't say for sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's three apartments? No. In the adjacent the building? It's the, it's the building immediately to the left of the right. apartment. And so the, I, my understanding is that three were shut down. I think you're correct, yes. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Anything else? No. Shall I read the resolution? Or uh, yes. Um, Jenny mentioned that. Did you mention that Kendall's leaving? Yes, you did. Of course. Mm -hmm. Brian's moving up. So resolution. I'd entertain a motion to pass resolution twenty twenty three thirty five mm -hmm. reclassification of MTFR employee, whereas. Whereas the, the continuing need exists to maintain proper staffing within the fire and rescue department, and whereas vacancies currently exist or will exist within the fire and rescue department for the full-time non-pension position of firefighter EMT, and whereas current part-time employee Brian Burnett meets or will meet all the necessary qualifications to serve in the capacity of firefighter EMT, and whereas Chief Denny Powell has recommended the appointment of this candidate and whereas funds are available for this purpose within the firefight department's 2023 operating budget. Now therefore, be it resolved that Brian Burnett shall be appointed to full-time position of firefighter EMT effective Monday, August 21st, 2023. Uh, I so move. I'll second. There's no change in his, his, his salary, his pay, his hourly, no, no. No, the only thing he'll get is he'll go to, uh, he'll get he'll get sick leave. He would get vacation after one year. He's not pensionable mm -hmm. um, because he's a thirty-six hour. He'll be a thirty-six hour employee. So that'll put him in that. It also health health insurance. Yeah, yeah, he get health insurance. Right? So that'll put him in that hundred and six hour category as opposed to the two twelve, like the twenty four forty eight mm -hmm. people are on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Further discussion. Uh -huh. The move and seconded to adopt resolution 2023-35 reclassification of minor county fire and, and rescue employee as for uh, Brian Burnett. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Mercer. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. Resolution is adopted. Anything else? Did not? <coughs> That's it. Cool. I have a question. And I could look this up myself, but have we seen much shift in our uh, insurance reimbursement for ambulance runs? Oh boy! So in the, I mean, the overall volume. So it, it, I, I actually am a little. That's a that's a really hard question because uh, you know when we look at what the auditor is saying, we're we're going to get. That doesn't make sense with based on the numbers that MediCount provided in that most recent report. So I don't honestly, I don't know how to answer that question, which obviously is a terrible way to do it. But I need a, that that is on my week agenda, assuming I don't have a week like last week, to actually go through that report. I'll call MediCount and set an appointment up with them to do a virtual meeting to see if I can get better answers to that. Because for me, when I'm looking at at least our revenue coming in for EMS building, it seems very consistent or slightly above what we got the previous year, but that doesn't make sense to what the what the auditor is saying. I'm not I don't understand where that discrepancy is mm -hmm. at all. Because um, you know, you look at where we see a reimbursement rate of I forget what the the, the that report said, but I want to say it was in the neighborhood of like ninety eight percent which is phenomenal, yeah. absolutely phenomenal. Um, so let me get back to you on that and see if I have a, a more concrete answer. Yeah, I was just trying to think of other little ways of getting money into the fire funds. Right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I guess that's maybe maxed out. Yeah, typically they will say, 
what I would expect when, when I have this meeting is they'll say, yes, you can go ahead and increase your fees, but the reality still is the insurance companies are, they kind of have their set schedule and you can go, you can charge whatever you want to charge, but this is still what we're going to pay. So that's kind of what we're at. Okay. Thank you, Denny. Cemetery and roads report. Dan could not be with us tonight. He left me with a couple of bits of information. Okay. Um, I guess the one to start off with is that we, we've had our first full burial in a column burial. Um, it went fine. Uh, everybody was happy with the process and the procedure. Um, it also clicked into the, the, the new, uh, said that I think the last meeting, the new responsibility that we have to provide the, the panels, the doors, as it were, for each one so they're consistent. Uh, and so he's working his way through that with this occupant, whatever I call him, I'm sorry, um, this person, this set of remains. Um, and I have been in contact three or four times with the woman from Dodds who's in charge of all this, getting line of communication consistent as to you know what we want, what they can provide, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously cost you know, for, for the customer. So most of that's in place. I think we're pretty much set as to, and I, I, I made a, a sheet of, of prices and a couple of basic rules uh, that I gave Dan to, to be able to consult with people who are interested in that. Okay. We have sold half a dozen, maybe. In Colorado. Yeah, in, in the last month. To, to wow. people who are still with us. Yes. This is called pre meet. <laughs> um, road wise, he, he, they're obviously they're busy this time of year. Everything is growing, and everything needs to be mowed slash trimmed slash. Everything else that goes with roads, including, well, I'll back up in the cemetery, so that there's, there's a weeding, weed eating that needs to be done prior to um, Labor Day. Uh, traditionally, Labor Day is one of those days that we target, that we want the cemetery to look particularly uh, uh, clean. And so they will be doing a lot of that next week. Um, There was something else, but I can't remember what he said. Um, Edward, you're talking to him about his shoulder. Oh, you his, yeah, his health uh, is is still he's still recovering. Uh, he has permission to work full time, um, but with a certain limited amount of, of effort that he can put into that that arm uh, because of the tear in the bicep, something or another that is not yet diminished. There's a blood clot in there that needs to be diminished with the with medicine. And so he's, we, we are still asking him to uh, not extend himself physically <coughs> uh, in that arm. And okay. he, he, he's very cognizant of that. He's not, he's not overextending himself uh, at all, which is good. I mean, he's not sitting around eating bonbons, but he's, uh, he's not out uh, cutting trees down and lifting big, big huge logs and things like that. Uh, two small bits from the last meeting that we had on the agenda of equipment upgrades that we didn't get to. Uh, he has asked that we um, authorize the purchase of a new trailer for the, the uh, road department. The trailer that they have, uh, although still functional, is older than dirt, and he's just concerned that the weight capacity of it, which is just barely kind of matching what, you know, what we're putting on it, uh, it would be better to have a new one. This is for hauling equipment. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there is substantial um, uh, funds available for equipment, and we've been talking about that. So I would like to, for him, request the authorization to purchase said trailer uh, that he's, uh, he's... Does he have an estimated price? 
He does indeed. Six thousand nine hundred fifty dollars. I would support that. Okay. Do uh, we hear a motion? Or do we need one? I, I guess we do at that that price. We, it's it's over what you know what they generally authorize them to to do, so that brings it to the board for approval. So I would move that we authorize this purchase of the of the. Uh, I second that motion. Trailer. Any further discussions? Besides, what's he going to do with the old one? Put it in the line of the back hole in the old truck. We still got to get rid of all that. Okay. I've always wanted a trailer. <laughs> <laughs> this could be your lucky day. <laughs> and you could rent space to park it. Unless you have a farther in Champaign County. <laughs> um, hearing no more discussion, may we go? To move and second it to approve the purchase of a new road department trailer for home equipment. Probably in the amount of six thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars uh, Mr. Moocher. Yes. Mr. Hoffman. Yes. Mr. Moyer. Yes. He's also investigating the possibilities. He's not too far into it because he's been fairly busy um, of replacing the existing backhoe that we have, which is over 25 years and has a fair amount of hours on it. And it's gotten to the point where it requires a substantial, uh, not routine maintenance, but maintenance. Uh, it blows hydraulic lines all the time. Uh, the hydraulic rams that operate the, the arms and the legs and the buckets, and he's had to replace bunches of those. Uh, right now it's down because there is a, um, a piece of the hydraulic system that's not operating. So he asked if, if he could look th through the possibility of getting a, uh, another used one. The one we have is used. We generally don't buy that large of a piece of equipment for uh, new, it's usually not a trailer, excuse me, of course, but, but the backhoe. So that's going to be ongoing for a while. Okay. Um, hopefully, he'll get a decision for that before the snow flies, because a large amount of the use of the, of the work of the backhoe is to move salt from the salt shed into the trucks as, as needed. Um, and speaking of salt sheds, mm -hmm. they could bring up some of the old wounds, but are we still in that, um, planning to? Um... It, it's, you know, it's on his list of things, and he just. An addition, an addition to the salt. Oh, yeah. But, he, he just can't get yeah, it right yeah. now. For the purposes of protecting all this nice mm -hmm. equipment we have. Yeah. Our new dump, dump truck and right. things. And backhoe and, and, and a trimmer that sits out uh, a lot. Weather. So anyway, that's, oh, just an update cool. on, that's just an update on that. Uh, that's all I had for, for, for potential subject. Okay. Um, oh, there is right there. There is right there. I'm, back yeah. there. I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Yeah, I moved it up from last week. Mm -hmm. um, fiscal officer's report. Margaret will be here um, September 6th. So if you have your specific questions, it, it, it all, all, you can bring them. And also, I say good night. If you have them, give her a heads up. To prepare for the meeting, um, reminder that that's a Wednesday. Next next meeting is a holiday, um, and then we have a resolution. Am I supposed to have a copy of that? I, I, I couldn't find it. Thank you. And entertain a motion to accept resolution 2023-34, amendment of permanent appropriations, whereas it, it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations, general fund increased by $500, gas tax fund, increased by $122, and fire fund increased by $500 for travel and meeting. The Miami Township Trustees authorized the fiscal officer to do so immediately. So, I, I will make that motion. 
Second. Any further discussion? I don't know. May we vote? It's been moved and seconded to adopt resolution 2023-34, amendment of permanent appropriations as enumerated. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Mucher. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Resolution is adopted. So the inspector is not here this week. Um, I don't really do a BZA coordinator update, do I? Basically, the lawyer's still looking at it and is working on an agritourism. You know, you might mention the personnel change in the, the BZA. Well, we had a resignation. Oh, yeah. You mean a resignation of um, Barbara Krabeck, mm -hmm. who cited that she said in, because of health reasons and needing to cut down on commitments. So, luckily, we have one alternate now, and I'll start fishing for some more. Great. And also, I mean, yeah, great. well, I assume we will all fish. Fish away. For, Z, for the Zoning Commission, too. Yeah. Throw that line out there. Yeah. You read. Um, there's one more thing for zoning. Oh, yes, there is a BZA coming up September 14th involving agritourism. It should be interesting. Is it just agritourism, like, generally? Or is it no. someone, like, something specific? Someone is seeking, seeking permission That's for a whole plan. I, I don't know if we should state the name or the point. Probably not. No worries. Um, It'll be in the paper, but, you know, when they do yeah. the public notice yeah. or whatever. Right. Um, standing committee report, unless somebody else has something else for zoning. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is not zoning, but this is uh, when we passed the permanent appropriations resolution, you read it as number 34, mm -hmm. and the fire employee one was 35. Five. Yeah, so, this, okay. that's what was written on the page. So okay, fine. Yeah, they're in order. Just flip, but just so we, I just was being picky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for checking. Mm -hmm. so we didn't make a mistake. I just, no. Standing committees. Um, MBRPC, I didn't go this month. I was meeting with the um, assessment people during that exact same time. And they have anything for their respective bias development corporation that belong in there? That's my mistake. Oh no, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought it said climate Zero. committee, and I'm like, they no longer exist. Okay. Um, I did attend the most recent uh, executive committee meeting for the regional planning in Green County, and there was discussion regarding a uh, subdivision that's being. Opened up in Beaver Creek Township, and it's, I think it's the one we talked about briefly about uh, the 80, yeah. 80, 80 home sites, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I just thought that was interesting, but uh, they did approve it. Um, mm. It's only section one of three, uh, so it's going to be a large, I think, I think eventually it's going to be 160 plus times uh, oh. down off of Trayvine Road, where oh. it's now a massive one huge subdivision from hilltop to, to um, Route 35. But so that was the, the Green County um, traffic people are putting in some sort of... There was a plan to put a roundabout in the in in the in the subdivision to to, to address that subdivision and the county engineer um, decided to, to nix that plan, even though it was being paid for by the, by, the, um, by the developer, and that resulted in the county commission uh, pursuing legal opinions as to what, who has the authority to, to uh, um, control roads and, and, and projects, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which eventually came back, the, the opinion was from the attorneys, was that the commission actually owns the road, so they ultimately would have that, um, that authority. And so under appeal, if the developer wanted to appeal that decision by the county engineer, they could appeal it to the county commission in order to get the, the, the roundabout done. Thanks. Subsequent to all that, 
kerfuffle um, uh, uh, quite a while ago, I'm sure. And now, I can't remember how long it was. Uh, the cost of um, the development, because of inflation and change orders and this and that, the other thing, has gone from uh, 1.5 million to provide water and sewer to the project. It's now up to like 3.9 or something million to put, they have to put a 48 inch, 48 inch sewer pipe that has to run a thousand feet from here to there, including underneath Trayvon Road, which is gonna be a mess. Uh, so this cost has gone up so high that they're kind of waffling on the developer on funding this roundabout, which according to the county engineer is not needed anyway. So if that's the case, uh, I, I, the commission would like to hold their feet to the fire and say, well, you made a commitment, blah, 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 blah. Uh, who knows how that's going to go. But uh, one additional side note I found was interesting was, and, and I, I knew this was happening, the commission also requested of the, of the uh, lawyers uh, to check and see who controlled township roads. Uh, and they found out that Unlike county roads, township trustees actually own their roads. So, we own roads. But so the, well, go on. The, the county roads. engineer can maintain her authority on township roads to do what she normally did before. For example, if somebody wanted to put a roundabout up in the, in the township road, she would have the authority to nix that or say we need a roundabout and. and Snip Road or, or, or whatever, but they can't over. They can't. Someone cannot appeal to the county commissioners a decision that she's making about a township road because the township owns it and not the county. Do we say no to a roundabout? <laughs> so our, if we roundabout literally own the road, how is it that the county engineer from one year to the next can say that is now a county road and you have this other township road? That is a good question, and I was meaning to ask our engineer about that, or our uh, commissioner about that, but. Something worth clarifying. Yes, true. Oh, you all, I don't know if you all know, but in the long range transportation plan of Green County, there is a roundabout that is um, being floated at an idea at High Road and, and, and 68. Oh, no. at Hyde and 68? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not at 235 and 68? No, Hyde Road and 68. Um, That's in a very long range plan. Right? Very long range plan, and it's just a wish list. You know, and it's just like a wish list that's this long of, of projects. But it's just kind of interesting that that's on there. Hyde Road. Does anybody know what the reason? Because I don't ever know why a roundabout is. You know, I what's the utility specifically in roundabout? To um, slow people down there, or yeah, and it, it creates the most fatal of accidents, which are these kind of okay. Yeah, it's a big part of it's accident reduction, and it does slow people down, and you don't have to stop. Yeah, okay. It's just yeah. a learning curve with people getting used to roundabouts. <laughs> I it's, always it speeds things it. up through the intersection, sure. but, but it slows, slows them down, down on the approaches. Yeah. Sounds cool. good. And it gets rid of the stop signs, which ten people or lights or whatever sure. people tend to run and run into each other. Yeah. So a lot of times hmm. they look at accident maps and see where the big trouble spots are. And, yeah. yeah, that is a big trouble. And when you said that they are talking about that or being it's being floated, mm -hmm. who's floating it? Uh, planners, to long range the, planners to the county or to the county for their long range transportation plan. Gotcha. That, okay. that was. Um, implemented last year um, okay. after a fair amount of studies and, and local jurisdictions had meetings and uh, work sessions as to what they felt was necessary in their their townships and and it was just it was just as a result of one of those um, public meetings public hearing public open houses that, that this uh, idea was floated and so it was just put in that list of, of ideas okay. projected ideas uh, um, of course it, all, the only part that would that would in, uh, impact Miami Township is East High Road to the to the west of 68 is a, a township road, not to the not to the east of it, 
and then of course 68 down to the south isn't but it would still it, it, it would still impact us uh, impact our fire and rescue mm -hmm. yes. in, a good, in a good way <laughs> but don't, don't, hold, don't hold your breath good point <laughs> that's, good that's, point. that's somewhat of a 25 year projected plan. yeah yeah we'll, we'll all be retired by yeah <laughs> i'm gonna make sure i heard you right okay our my understanding is to the east is township oh, right. to the east right. yes oh did i flip that right. i'm sorry um clifton union cemetery uh, we've done nothing. One of our board members had a heart attack, and so <clears throat> we're all on hold. Okay. Normally, we would not. The, the, the pressing business is our archives and how to sort through our files rather than where to store them. Rather. And all that, all that stuff is gone. Um, right now, it's on top of my desk. Why is DC? I don't remember if it was if I reported last last time I spoke about YSDC getting a hundred thousand dollar grant. You did, mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, could quickly be followed by not quickly, but the completion of that two hundred thousand dollar grant to do more planning on community solar, uh, and we want to do that in collaboration with the township, the uh, zoning commission, uh, and rather specifically, uh, Lisa Abel is the one who would spearhead this, but uh, we want to have a, a work session with the township trustees, so it would be a, an official meeting of both organizations. Discussion about uh, community so solar economic development, uh, but that's pending. Unless Lisa talked to you, she just got back from vacation. I have not talked to Lisa. Okay. Uh, I, I hear she's back though. I hate to be both Forrest Gump and a, and a gadfly, but I, I need to get up to speed as to how development corporations at one point number one project uh, uh, proposed or emphasis was going to be on affordable housing i don't know what happened to that and for the life of me i don't see how that really is much of an economic boon to my township in yellow springs and i don't also don't really see how much economic boom solar is. I mean, there's, there's no jobs to it. There's no, there's, there's no, not a whole lot more property tax than, than whatever it's going on. Why is this an economic development priority? The, first of all, the affordable housing, I'm assuming that's based on an article in the Yellow Spring News, it was for reporting on one meeting that I was not at, but Maryland was, and I have never seen it as a part of the YSCC. You were talking historically that one of the missions was affordable. I don't know. It, it, it was no. reported in the local paper that there was a meeting that focused there. on it. Now, like, not I, one fire. I have not seen that as, I didn't. as accurate. I didn't. Uh, It's, uh, it's quickly housing. dropped off. I, I read housing, I didn't read affordable housing. Well, I'm not aware of housing even being a priority, but. Okay. Uh, so then, but the okay. solar, mm -hmm. uh, I agree. <laughs> uh, but we got a grant for it. When you get a grant, you. But isn't time better spent on economic development potential projects? I think this is a point to make in our collaborative meeting with the YSDC board. Mm -hmm. are, are you saying that a large solar project would not um, generate taxes? It doesn't? Mm -hmm. not, not, you're saying not more than residential? No, not more than residential, and, and it would, it would 
cancel out any uh, income tax from residential because there's no nobody's working, there's no jobs. You know, I mean, you drive down Corey Street and say hi to your solar panels there. How much economic development money is coming out of those solar panels? Electricity is uh, often a necessary thing. It's sort of like how much money do we get out of water? Uh, we need the water. I'm not arguing that one iota. I'm arguing if this is an economic development corporation, mm -hmm. how much economic benefit is going to be <clears throat> recouped from uh, 100 acres or 50 acres or whatever might come from this? You know, let's just say putting putting all of of, of uh, the Commerce Park or Vernay, which has been floated many times, mm -hmm. to, to cover it with solar. Uh, I'm just not sure. If that's Why the case. SDC received this grant? It is, it is it, long it, term. It is not our main. You just fall from the sky. They pursued it. Mm -hmm. It's not our not our main activity. They pursued um, it as an economic development. Your point. And in part, you were one of the first board members, correct? Mm -hmm. Starting at YSDC. Mm -hmm. I, I think you have a, uh, a lot to offer in a joint meeting of the two boards. Okay. Thank you. Which has not been scheduled yet. Thank you for your input. I just, you know, I, like I um, said, Forrest Gump. And I have an, another organization that I've been going to regular meetings of. Uh, representing the County Township Association. And I think it would be good to have uh, on the standing committee reports. Uh, I'm on the so-called policy committee. Uh, it's a de facto board of the Solid Waste District, Green County Solid Waste District. Hmm. Uh, and Were the district is supported by uh, per per ton fees on solid waste, uh, what goes to the landfills, and what is gathered for recycling, and to maintain under state law to maintain that uh, per ton fee to keep receiving it. Uh, we have to be over 20% recycling. And countywide, we are. Townships are very low mm -hmm. in percentage of recycling. And so I am working a meeting later this week with uh, our district director uh, to brainstorm what what could we, we be doing? Uh, I have no, no conclusion. If you have any brilliant ideas, please share. And the people in the township, they, they contract for their own trash services? Yep. And there, there are three, three suppliers, and I do not know whether... I don't think they have uniform services across the county. Some of them, you have the option of recycle, paying extra for recycling. Paying extra, that's... I think that's unfortunately one of the big. So good luck at your meeting coming up with a solution. <laughs> I, I just mean that sincerely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have nothing for the environmental commission. Um, Green County Township Association. I, I, I haven't seen. It doesn't matter. I haven't seen the invitation for the the dinner this this um, month. But I haven't noticed that either. I think. Thinking I wanted to start going again. Okay, well, when I find out, I'll let you know. Any new business? I, I didn't hear from you guys that you had any new business. Either of my fellow trustees have new business? They used to skip either August or September, and I'm not sure. You know sure what? That rings a bell, too. Which one? That rings Thought a bell, too. August, but... It might be skipped this month. Mm -hmm. I have no new business. Any old business? I was going to ask you and compliment you on your work brainstorming on a, a fountain for the cemetery. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I know it's an ongoing process. I just wanted yeah, to it's, it's, publicly it, comment that you, yeah, you've been so, working on it. And, uh, and that's really interesting, your, your feedback. And I, I found this place in Cincinnati I want to go down to because your idea of a $2,500 fountain that with, inst with installation costs and things is, I, I'm going to see if it's a fantasy. I was dreaming, I'm sorry. Yeah. But I will come out <laughs> with hard numbers. Um, but I, I, yeah. I, and how about the Oak Grove entrance? I can't. I'm, I got nothing on the Oak Grove entrance. I got nothing on the Oak Grove entrance. If anybody wants to go down to the and walk that path through the natural burial area where there's an opening in the trees that will open up to the Oak Grove Cemetery and see a vision of what could be there that will still allow trucks to go through. Mm -hmm. Be my guest. I'm stumped. Okay. Just How about you? Don? I'll walk through again. Okay. I'm just completely stumped. I mean, I can see something. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any ideas? Cindy, do maybe she has some ideas? Oh, I'm not a visual, visualizer. Um, got, Chris's wife is also named Cindy, so oh, maybe mine fit. Excuse me. I had ideas originally, but I thought you would like to take on the project, that's all. Well, the cemetery road report is over. That's true. <laughs> this is but old. This is old. <laughs> this is old. Oh, is. Um, so but I'm, I'm, I'm really liking this. Fountain thing though, so. Okay, cool. Well, keep at it. Yeah, you're getting there. I'm getting there. Um, sorry to just point you on the entryway, but. That's it. I just wonder if you had something, you know, bubbling in the back of your. Cemetery. Creative mind. juices. <laughs> um, are we allowed to quit by six? <laughs> I, I um, would entertain more. Happily I enthusiastically motion. move that we adjourn. And I will second. And we'll see everyone Wednesday, September the 6th. Yes, enjoy your Labor Day.